Hi everyone, welcome back to another session of RBI 247, wherein we discuss finance, current affairs. Before we start today's video, there's something that I want to tell you. We, the team of Anand Jindal, is going to bring something very important and very interesting for all of you very soon. So stay tuned. Let's get started with today's session. Today we are going to discuss two topics. The first one is about RBI's MOU that it has signed with the Central Bank of UAE. And of course, answer writing. I hope you all haven't forgotten answer writing ki practice. Hum karte hai. Every week we write one answer that is going to be relevant from finance current affairs section. Okay, so the first news today is RBI has signed an MOU with the Central Bank of UAE. Now, what is the purpose of the Central Bank? So, MOUs, jo hai, every country keeps signing MOUs with other countries. The Central Bank also signs MOUs with other countries. But the purpose of this MOU will be to work towards the fintech sector, to collaborate in the emerging fintech sectors, areas, financial products launch kare jayenge, and especially the focus will be on CBDC, the Central Bank Digital Currency. The RBI along with the Central Bank of UAE is aiming to collaborate and to bring interoperability in the CBDC, which means payments can be made, cross-border payment and settlement can be made using central bank digital currency. So, we all know that RBI is working towards the central bank digital currency and last year a framework came from RBI ka for the central bank digital currency. With that, we will also recapitulate or revise the central bank digital currency, the framework that was brought by RBI. Okay, so the purpose of this MOU, I hope you all understood, to work towards the fintech sector, uh, various solutions will be provided, pilot projects will be launched, especially in the CBDC sector. So, uh, the, C the Central Bank of UAE and the RBI will jointly conduct proof of concept and bring pilot projects, pilot of the bilateral CBDC, which will bridge to facilitate the cross-border CBDC transactions of remittance. We already know UAE se bohat zyada remittances aate hai India mein, and thus, this will also work towards cross-border transactions and remittances through CBDC mechanism. Now, interoperability ka kya matlab hota hai? Using one payment mechanism, you can make payments in a lot of other areas or a lot of other sectors or using a lot of other mechanisms as well. Okay, so CBDC mein interoperability aane ka kya matlab hai? Which means that payments can be made using CBDC of India and the CBDC of UAE cross-border which means CBDC of India can be used to make payment in UAE as against the CBDC of UAE. Okay, so uh, this bilateral engagement is for testing cross-border mechanism use of case of CBDC and what would be the benefit of this? Cost reduce karna to increase efficiency and transparency in cross-border settlement, cross-border transactions and further enhance the economic ties between India and UAE. This will also provide technical collaboration and knowledge sharing in matters of fintech, financial solutions, financial services and products. Okay, so this was the MEU that was signed between India and UAE. Let's study a little bit about CBDC. What is CBDC? So last year the framework was launched by the RBI. A concept paper was brought out and e-rupee bhi aya tha. E-rupee was also brought out by RBI which will work as CBDC. Now, However, there was no question in objective or descriptive of RBI grade B exam. So this year, it is expected that a question will definitely be asked from either e rupee or CBDC. What are the, what is the mechanism? What are the models, framework? So hamarely, it is very important to revise CBDC. A question can also be asked in descriptive. What is CBDC? How will it help the economy? So essay questions zaroor aayenge. Okay, let's recapitulate CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. As the name suggests, it is a digital currency which is issued by the central bank. So the RBI has issued digital currency. This will work just like paper currency. So currently we are uh, trading using paper currency. That is, for example, if we have, if I have a 2000 rupee note, this becomes a bearer instrument and which means I am an owner of this 2000 rupee note and using these two, this 2000 rupee note, I can make transactions, I can make payments. Therefore, this digital currency will work just like a paper currency. This is a sovereign currency which is issued by the central bank. 
इसीलिए इट इज सेफ इट इज ट्रांसपेरेंट टू यूज डिजिटल करेंसी इट विल बी अ लीगल टेंडर वॉट डज इट मीन इट विल बी अ लीगल टेंडर इट मीन्स दैट नो बडी कैन रिजेक्ट और नॉट एक्सेप्ट द करेंसी और रिफ्यूज टू एक्सेप्ट द करेंसी तो कोई रिफ्यूज नहीं कर सकता टू एक्सेप्ट दिस एज करेंसी सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल टूडे इफ आई वॉन्ट टू मेक यू नो पेमेंट टू यू यूजिंग पेटीएम मैकेजम यूजिंग पेटीएम वॉलेट एंड यू टेल मी दैट यू नो आई डोंट यूज पेटीएम कैन यू प्लीज पे मी इन कैश विच मीन्स यू रिफ्यूज टू एक्सेप्ट वन पेमेंट मैकेजम बट यू आर एक्सेप्टिंग अन अदर पेमेंट मैकेजम दिस डिजिटल करेंसी this central bank digital currency will be a legal tender which means no one can refuse to accept this digital currency just like a paper instrument or paper currency which is currently issued so this central bank digital currency will be currency in digital form only which will be issued by the central bank now because it is issued by the central bank there is a backing of the government it is backed by the sovereign government sovereign government guarantee se ye backed hai therefore it is safe it is liquid instrument which means transactions can be made immediately it is not illiquid and settlement finality ka issuance uh, in assurance hota hai because it is backed by the central government so this is a sovereign currency sovereign digital currency that is a legal tender working just like paper currency or in place of paper currency okay so it is just like sovereign paper currency but in a different format now it is exchangeable at par with existing currency which means if you have a certain amount in the existing currency let's say i have a 2000 rupee note this will give me now it will be exchangeable with the cbdc which means i can get the same value of cbdc or let's say e rupee i can get the same value of cbdc because that is the amount of currency that i held the amount of money that i already had with me now it is a legal tender safe store of value what does this mean so for example if i have a paper note of 2000 it is just a piece of paper however the value of this paper is 2000 because it 2000 rupee ki currency hai so the value of this paper this instrument bearer instrument is 2000 now similarly central bank digital currency will be a store of value just like paper currency is a store of value ek paper ki value hai that is 2000 rupees in ke in this case now similarly cbdc will also be a store of value just that it is backed by the central government and not by the private parties and like bitcoin or cryptocurrency which are backed which are you know issued by the private parties this is backed by the central government because it is issued by the central bank rbi issue karta hai now when it is issued by the rbi it becomes a liability of the rbi just like abhi tak ki jo paper currency hoti hai so rbi has a lot of functions one of the functions of rbi is issuance of currency to issue currency and the currency that is issued by the rbi forms part of the liability of the rbi in its balance sheet forms part of liability of the rbi in its balance sheet thus because this currency will work just like paper currency it is a currency which is issued by the central bank this will also form, form part of the uh, uh, liability of in the balance sheet of the central bank this will be liability of rbi now let's uh, look at the details of the central bank digital currency firstly the types so rbi has issued that there will be two types of central bank digital currency wholesale and retail ab as the name suggest retail mechanism means one on one or individual basis so retail means owners like who will be the owners of this cbdc this uh, retail cbdc businesses private parties or consumers clients users like you and me however when we talk about wholesale we say that wholesale is something that jisme bahut sare users aa jate hain so these will be used by intermediaries or financial institutions or financial service providers as told by the rbi now the choice of cbdc issuance mode it will be indirect mode and direct mode abhi thoda detail mein samjhenge going further what is indirect and direct mode instruments now this is a non remunerative cbdc which means that you will not be able to gain any return or any interest on the cbdc so just like you hold paper currency but you do not get any interest in you know if you have certain amount of cash 
लाइंग अराउंड इन योर होम और इन योर वॉलेट अब उस पर आपको इंटरेस्ट या रिटर्न नहीं मिलता है अनलाइक दैट इंटरेस्ट विथ यू गेट इन सेविंग डिपोजिट इन अ बैंक सो अब अगर आप उसी पैसों को सेविंग डिपोजिट बैंक में जाके डिपोजिट कर देते हैं इट बिकम्स योर सेविंग और सेविंग डिपोजिट इन अ बैंक यू कैन गेट इंटरेस्ट ऑन दैट बट द कैश दैट इज देयर और द करेंसी दैट इज देयर इन योर होम यू के नॉट गेट रिटर्न ऑन दैट सिमिलरली सी बी डी सी में यू विल नॉट गेट एनी रिटर्न इट विल बी नॉन रेम्यूनरेटिव यू विल नॉट गेट एनी इंटरेस्ट ऑन दिस सी बी डी सी नाउ द टू फॉर्म्स ऑफ सी बी डी सी अब ये ट्रांजेक्शन किस फॉर्म में होगी द होल सेल विल बी ऑन अकाउंट बेस्ड एंड रिटेल विल बी टोकन बेस्ड रिटेल में अभी हम इन दोनों को भी समझेंगे ओके द टू टाइप्स ऑफ सी बी डी सी दैट दी आर बी आई इज गोइंग टू इशू इज वन रिटेल एंड होल सेल एज द नेम सजेस्ट रिटेल सी बी डी सी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक वर्जन ऑफ कैश विच इज सी बी डी सी मेन्ट फॉर रिटेल ट्रांजेक्शन विच मीन्स यूजर्स लाइक यू एंड मी कंज्यूमर्स बिजनेस प्राइवेट पार्टीज तो दिस दिस इज रिटेल सी बी डी सी हाउएवर होल सेल सी बी डी सी होल सेल सी बी डी सी में देर इज रिस्ट्रिक्टेड एक्सेस टू ओनली सर्टन फाइनेंशियल इंटरमीडियरीज और फाइनेंशियल सर्विस प्रोवाइडर तो आर बी आई सिर्फ लिमिटेड एक्सेस रिस्ट्रिक्टेड एक्सेस देगा टू सर्टन फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन और फाइनेंशियल सर्विस प्रोवाइडर हु कैन इशू और यूज दीज होल सेल सी बी डी सीज नाउ वाई बिकॉज होल सेल सी बी डी सीज में देर इज नॉट अ सिंगल यूजर बट अ फाइनेंशियल इंटरमीडियरी लेट से फॉर एग्जाम्पल बैंक देर आर अ लॉट ऑफ अकाउंट होल्डर्स दैट आर देर सो ये अब होल सेल में डील करते हैं दैट इज वाई होल सेल सी बी डी सीज नाउ ओनली सिलेक्ट फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन फाइनेंशियल इंटरमीडियरीज विल बी एबल टू यूज होल सेल सी बी डी सी नाउ यूजिंग होल सेल सी बी डी सी इट विल बी एबल फॉर सेटलमेंट ऑफ इंटर बैंक ट्रांसफर्स सो वॉट हैपन्स इज एक बैंक दूसरे बैंक में एट द एंड ऑफ द डे और लेट से अ फोर्थ नाइट इंटर बैंक सेटलमेंट्स होती है दैट इज मे बी ऑन नेट बेसिस और इवन समाइम्स ऑन ग्रोस बेसिस तो जब नेट बेसिस पे सेटलमेंट होती है एट द एंड ऑफ द डे और लेट से एट द एंड ऑफ द फोर्थ नाइट वन बैंक ओज some amount to the second bank this is interbank transactions that are taking place or other interbank transactions also takes place for example call money ya uh, repo rate pe jo interbank transactions hoti hai transfers that take place this will be wholesale cbdc so if one bank is transferring something to the other bank that is interbank transactions are taking place that will be in wholesale mechanism or wholesale cbdc so this has the potential to transform the whole settlement system whole settlement system Unlike the retail CBDC. अब जो दो मॉडल्स हैं, the RBI has brought out two models for issuance of CBDC. Issue करने के लिए RBI दो मॉडल लेके आई है. First one is direct model and the second one is indirect model. So direct and indirect. In direct model, RBI will issue and perform other functions as to you know uh, distribution of CBDC or let's say transaction verification. ऐसे functions RBI will be performing all the functions in direct model. However, in indirect model, it's called intermediary model. We both say there is an intermediary in between. For example, any bank or any other service provider. So there is an intermediary in between that will perform some of the functions towards CBDC. So the central bank, that is RBI. will issue the cbdc however the distribution or any other mechanism or the management of the cbdc will be done by the intermediary i hope it is clear direct mechanism mein rbi is performing all the functions of you know issue from issuing to management to transaction verification to distribution sara mechanism rbi hi kar raha hai now indirect model or intermediary model mein there is an intermediary involved in between which can be a bank or any other service provider that will be told by rbi and rbi issue karega the cbdc and this will reach the consumer indirectly through this intermediary okay now ab do system basis pe ye transactions hongi in retail in cbdc retail in cbdc retail this will be done through token mechanism however in wholesale this will be done through account based mechanism this will be done through account based mechanism now what happens in a token mechanism is the individual owner of that currency us basis pe usko ek token milega which will verify that a particular person is the owner of that instrument 
So for example, today, if I have a 2000 rupee note, which is a bearer instrument, now this 2000 rupee note, ko hum kya kehte na? bearer instrument, which means I am the bearer. Okay. Now I am the owner of this instrument. I hold this instrument. Similarly, ab isme token milega aapko, which means you are the owner of this amount or this value of digital currency. So ye token ki ownership hogi, which will be in which will ensure that this token is genuine or the ownership of this token is genuine. So, a token-based CBDC would be a bearer instrument just like banknotes. For example, if I have a banknote, which means I am the owner. Similarly, a digital currency, may there will be a token and ownership hogi us token ki which will have that value. Now, the person receiving the token will verify that his ownership of the token is genuine. Now, if you have to transfer this token, which means the owner ownership changes. A token-based CBDC is used as a preferred mode for CBDC R, that is retail. And it will be just like physical cash. The retail may token-based. However, in wholesale, we have account-based. Because for example, to financial intermediaries like banks, there are a lot of account holders in a bank. And further, a lot of transactions are taken place and net balances are maintained by the bank. So, when balances hote hai, or record of all the transactions is to be maintained, it will be done on account basis and not on token basis. So, in account based system, it would require maintenance of records of balances and transactions of all holders of the CBDC and indicate ownership of the monetary balances. Ab ownership jo hogi, wo balance pe hogi. All the, after all the transactions, the balance that is left. For example, aapka account mein kitna balance hai. And you are the owner of that balance of your account. Similarly, CBDC wholesale mein, because it is used by financial intermediaries and not a retailer, to ye account basis pe hota hai. Now, this CBDC is also available in online mode and offline mode. However, offline mode mein, RBI faces a certain risk because what can happen is it can lead to double debit or you know offline mechanism may if you've made a payment and this payment is not reflected when you actually check it online that can be a problem. So just uh, central ledger banta hai, so single ledger banta hai in the end that can show a mismatch that cannot reflect uh, the offline transactions that are made. So this is one risk that is there. Otherwise, CBDC is also available offline and online. Okay, yes. So this brings us to the end of the first topic. We have discussed earlier CBDC. Kya hai? It is very important for your exam. CBD, there is a high chance that CBDC ka question will come. If not an objective, then maybe in descriptive. Or otherwise, phase one may definitely e rupee ya CBDC se put sakte hai. To recapitulate, let's look at this. Types of CBDC, wholesale, retail. Choice of CBDC is direct and indirect mode. Direct mode mein RBI is performing all the functions related to that CBDC. Indirect mode mein there is an intermediary involved. Now, this are non remunerative that, will, that means you will not get any interest. Just like in paper currency, you do not get any interest. Now, forms of CBDC or mechanism kya hota hai transactions ka? In wholesale, it is account based. Just mein balances maintain hote hai and ownership is on the balances that is maintained. However, token based pe ownership is of that amount that you hold in the, in, you know, your particular digital currency that you have and after the transaction, the ownership is transferred of that digital currency. Okay, now let's come to answer writing. Humne last time bhi ek answer likha tha, bohat achha sa. Let's practice again. The question for today is, what is NMP National Monetization Pipeline? And how is it different from NIP? Sabse pehle ye samajna hai, this question, this was launched in last year's budget, 2019 mein NIP aaya tha. And 2020, yeah 2021, I think 2021 mein NMP aaya tha. Now, sabse pehle you have to understand, either you know what is NMP or NIP or you don't know. If you know, then definitely attempt the, you know, the question. And there's high chance ki aapko bhoat achche marks mil jayenge. But unfortunately, if you do not know, what is, the NM, what is NMP and NIP? Because it is a conceptual question. You can't Either you know it or you don't know it. Now, let's break this question into two parts. First is, what is NMP and how is it different from NIP? 
सो द फर्स्ट पार्ट इज अबाउट एन एम पी पहले एक बार देख लेते हैं एनआईपी क्या होता है तो नेशनल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पाइपलाइन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन में प्राइम मिनिस्टर इन इट्स इंडिपेंडेंस डे स्पीच टॉक्ट अबाउट नेशनल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पाइपलाइन कि इंडिया को फाइव ट्रिलियन डॉलर इकोनॉमी बनना है बाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव जिसके लिए इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर में इन्वेस्टमेंट करना बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है सो बिकॉज इंडिया वॉन्ट्स टू बी फाइव ट्रिलियन डॉलर इकोनॉमी बाई दी एंड ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव इट इज हाईली इंपॉर्टेंट दैट द इकोनॉमी वर्क टूवर्ड्स इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इसलिए एक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्लान बनाया गया था फॉर फाइव ईयर्स दैट ये वन लैख करोर ट्रिपल वन लैख करोर इनिशियली इट वॉज हंड्रेड लैख करोर but in a lot of places it is also written that this triple 1 lakh crore so triple 1 lakh crore will be invested in infrastructure projects that will work towards you know job creation or uh, creating you know uh, ease of living standard of living maintain karna inclusive development maintain karna and infrastructure should be available to all accessible to all all sections of society so ab isme sector wise इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर में सेक्टर वाइज इन्वेस्टमेंट कितनी होगी दैट वाज प्रोवाइडेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट सो द गवर्नमेंट प्रोवाइडेड सेक्टर वाइज इन्वेस्टमेंट दैट इज सपोज्ड टू बी मेड आउट ऑफ दिस इन ईच एंड एवरी सेक्टर व्हाट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन्वेस्टमेंट दैट हैज टू बी मेंटेन इन एवरी सेक्टर दिस वाज इन एनआईटी लेट्स लुक एट द फर्स्ट पॉइंट एनएमपी अब तीन पार्ट्स में इसको ब्रेक करना है इंट्रो बॉडी एंड कंक्लूजन इंट्रो ओके इन इंट्रोडक्शन यू कैन इधर राइट अबाउट व्हाट इज मोनेटाइजेशन क्योंकि मोनेटाइजेशन नेशनल मोनेटाइजेशन पाइपलाइन इसमें मोनेटाइजेशन क्या है इफ यू डू नॉट नो दैट इट विल बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू राइट एन आंसर तो आप या तो यू कैन एक्सप्लेन व्हाट इज मोनेटाइजेशन और यू कैन राइट डाउन डायरेक्टली वॉट इज एन या तो यहां से भी शुरू कर सकते हैं और यू कैन राइट आउट वॉट इज मोनिटाइजेशन सो आई पर्सनली रोट वॉट इज मोनिटाइजेशन मोनिटाइजेशन इज वेन द गवर्नमेंट के जो एसेट्स हैं गवर्नमेंट you know give revenue rights rights to generate revenue to the private sector so government ka ek asset hai let's say ek railway hai ya ek port hai the government is giving this asset the right of this asset to generate revenue to the private sector so only revenue generation right is given to the private sector of brownfield assets in nmp ab monetization samjha diya humne intro mein we can also write about now इंट्रो में मोनेटाइजेशन समझा दिया वी कैन राइट वन और टू लाइन अबाउट एन एम पी हाउ डिड एन एम पी केम इन टू प्लेस सो द गवर्नमेंट डिसाइडेड द गवर्नमेंट डिसाइडेड दैट देर विल बी अट्रेटेजिक डिस इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लान एज पर दिसटेजिक डिस इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लान ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट द गवर्नमेंट विल फोकस और यू नो द फोकस ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट विल बी ऑन सर्टन की एरियाज ओनली सो फ्यू की एरियाज पे फोकस होगा गवर्नमेंट का या गवर्नमेंट का कंट्रोल होगा स्ट्रेटेजिक कंट्रोल ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट will be on few key areas and other areas will be disinvested by the government this was the strategic disinvestment plan decided by the government now nmp will work in line with this strategic disinvestment plan wherein the government decided that the focus or the you know strategic area of control of the government will be on certain areas or certain sectors for example nuclear sector defense sector atomic sector so kuch sectors mein hi कोर सेक्टर्स में कुछ कोर सेक्टर्स में द गवर्नमेंट विल हैव स्ट्रेटेजिक कंट्रोल एंड अदर सेक्टर्स विल बी डिसइनवेस्टेड सो एनएमपी इज सपोज टू बी वर्किंग इन लाइन विद दिस स्ट्रेटेजिक डिसइनवेस्टमेंट पॉलिसी सो व्हाट विल हैपन इन दिस एनएमपी अंडर दिस नेशनल मॉनेटरी पाइपलाइन द गवर्नमेंट एम्स एट यूजिंग इट्स अनयूज्ड और यू नो अनरियलाइज्ड एसेट्स कोर एसेट्स ब्राउनफील्ड एसेट्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट will be transferred to the private sector however however only revenue rights will be transferred and not ownership uh, rights so ownership transfer nahi hogi only revenue rights will be transferred to the private sector revenue rights over these core assets these unutilized assets or idle assets that are laying down so isme ek list of assets will be provided to the private sector to choose from wherein private sector can make investment and generate revenue and pay some money to the government as well okay now ab hum isme amount likh sakte hain what is the target amount of monetization of the government so the target amount of monetization the target amount of monetization of the government is 6 lakh crore for 4 year from financial year 22 to 25 4 year ka plan hai government ka to monetize assets worth 6 lakh crore now out of the 6 lakh crore 66% is supposed 
is supposed to come from road, railway and power sector. If you know such data, well and good. If you do not, koi baat nahi. Jitna aapko aata hai, you will write that. But because, you know, of writing these data, important data, facts, you can enhance your answer and the examiner will know ki aapko actually mein pata hai ki ye kyun aaya gaya tha. What is the benefit of this? And data bhi aapko pata hai ki power sector, road, railway sector mein 66%, that is two third will be from these sectors only. Further, if you know any current data that in last year 2021-22, the government's target was 88,000 crore. 88,000 crore ke assets ko monetize karna tha. However, the government monetized 96,000 crore ke asset. So, this also, this data you can also add 2021 mein. This was the target achieved by the government. So, uh, the government surpassed its target. What else you can write? Year you have written, yes, year, amount. You can also write benefits. So, what will be the benefit in one or two lines of this national monetization pipeline? Uh, through this, the idle assets of the government can now be used to generate revenue, not only for the government, but for the private in, uh, investors as well. And at the same time, infrastructure create hoga. Now, the next part talks about NIP. How is it different from NIP? Initially, you will NIP. Ke mein batayenge. I have just explained to you. So, five-year plan made by the government in 2019 wherein 1 triple 1 lakh crore will be invested in the infrastructure sector, infrastructure project. Further, share of central state and private sector can also be written if you know this. Okay, now what will be the benefit of Yevi Liksakpe hai? Very short mein NIP ke baare mein batana hai because it is not asked in the question. What is the difference between NIP and NMP? NIP is going to work towards infrastructure sector However, NMP is going to monetize the assets of the government. So, NIP infrastructure sector mein kaam kar raha hai. However, the monetization pipeline is going to monetize the idle assets of the government, brownfield assets of the government. Talking about the money, the investment here is triple one lakh crore. Here it is six lakh crore. It is five year plan. It is four year plan. Now, this NMP will work or complement the NIP. It will work under NIP or complement this NIP. Conclusion may you can write about how this is going to benefit the economy. The government aims at creating a 5 trillion dollar economy and for that it is very important ki hum infrastructure may invest kare to increase inclusive growth and so that infrastructure is available to all sections of the society. You can write a very good conclusion in this. So, Intro me, we explained what is monetization. Then we talked about Prime Minister's strategic disinvestment policy, wherein the focus of the government is to retain presence in only few identified areas and rest ko private sector ko tax karne ko milega. Okay. In line with this, the government launched NMP. The aim is 6 lakh crore ke assets ko monetize karna hai. This is the year from 4 year period, FY22 to 25. Now, this, what is the aim? Aims to unlock brownfield, value of brownfield projects by transferring to the private sector only revenue rights and not ownership rights in the projects using funds generated for infrastructure creation across the country. Now, up under this NMP, a framework will be given, a list of assets will be given to the private sector to choose from. Under this road railway power sector, 66%, this will comprise 66% of the total estimated value of assets that are supposed to be monetized. Now further, jo bhi hai, uh, telecom aviation ports in sectors may be monetization hogi. Now in 2021, the government surpassed its target of 88,000 crore and actual monetization took place for 96,000 crore. Then national infrastructure pipeline pe aajate hai, in one or two line define what is national infrastructure pipeline? Five year ka plan hai towards towards infrastructure project. Difference between NMP, NIP, amount, year. This NMP will complement the functioning of NIP. What is the importance of both NIP and NIP? Further, a conclusion, a very good conclusion. It is estimated that India would become a uh, India has to spend at least 4.5 trillion in the infrastructure sector by 2030 taki india ka 5 trillion dollar economy banne ka target achieve ho sake so that india attains the target of becoming a 5 trillion dollar economy 
Okay, this brings us to the end of the session. We wrote an answer on NMT and also discussed about RBI's MOU. This is our app. If you haven't yet downloaded, you can. Let's get started with the questions. What are the questions are very important for your exam? Which of the following statement is our incorrect about CBDC? It is a digital currency with a legal tender. Correct. CBDC will be launched only. Only in wholesale mode for selected financial institutes and financial intermediaries. No, it is launched both in wholesale and retail. CBDC will be based on blockchain mechanism. This is incorrect because RBI yet hasn't told which mechanism it is using to generate central bank digital currency. It is a bit uh, blockchain or yeah, Bitcoin ki tarah, blockchain mechanism or any other distributed ledger mechanism. Which of the following statement is are incorrect about CBDC? CBDC wholesale will be used by all private non-financial consumers and businesses. No, this is actually retail. CBDC retail will, CBDC retail is designed, is designed for restricted access to select financial institutions. No, this is CBDC wholesale. CBDC retail is intended for settlement of interbank transfers. No, this is again CBDC wholesale. And you incorrect statement batana hai isme. Do not forget that. Which of the following statement is our correct about CBDC direct and indirect mode? In direct mode, central bank will be responsible for managing all aspects of digital rupee. Correct. Central bank is responsible for managing all the aspects of digital rupee system. The central bank in direct mode issues CBDC to consumers indirectly through intermediaries and any claim by consumers will be managed by the intermediary. So if consumer has any claim on any or any issue with the central bank, it will be managed by the intermediary. CBDC retail works on account based mechanism. No, CBDC retail works on token based mechanism. With which of the following statement is that correct about NMT? Under NMT, the government aims to monetize both brownfield and greenfield projects. This is incorrect. In 2021-22, the government achieved the target of 88,000 crore. This is also incorrect. The target achieved was 96,000 crore. The NMT estimates aggregate monetization potential of rupees 6 lakh crore for 4 years. This is correct. With which of the following countries, the RBI has recently signed an MOU with for CBDC and its interoperability. You will tell the answer of this. Bohat easy hai. Hamne abhi hi padha hai. Okay. This was the last question for today. That brings us to the end of the session. I hope you enjoyed the session. Do not forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you.